Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to a brand new series that I'm just about to kick off. This series is called This Is Football. It's all basically a big build up to the weekend games in the Premier League. Um, I wanted to do this because there are so many talking points that I don't necessarily get across in my prediction videos, uh, obviously for time reasons. So this actually gives me a you know a good sort of range of behind my predictions for you guys to like sort of understand where I'm coming from and you know I'll get to talk about bits and bobs especially in the transfer windows open um but anyway guys this video is sponsored by LOL t-shirt company they sell my merch link for my merch down in the description below but anyway guys, the first game we're going to talk about is Man United vs Liverpool, so let's get down to it, so subscribe for more, thanks for watching, and let's go. So, Man United Liverpool. Man United Liverpool are one of them games, like, in the past, not so much these days because of the health and safety concern, that, as a young boy, I look forward to watching, you know, I'll always be sitting there with uh, my own man, or you know by myself I'd always sit there and watch this game um, and I'll make sure I will whether I was ill or not but you know this is one of the games where I really did and do like to watch it even now but as I said because their health and safety it might not get as rough as what it used to be my early memories of this game is Roy King used to get sent off a lot in this game um, Gary Neville you saw always got Jamie Carragher and now look at him Sky Sports presenters um, Suarez um, Dirk Cow, you know Chris and Oliver and Ronaldo Ray Rooney have all played in this game and they all know what it means to the people of Manchester and Liverpool um, as I said my Premier League predictions will come up at the end of this video so I gotta tell you what, what they are but I think Liverpool, if they mess up the title now more than any any time in the past, it's their mess up. I mean, they're 14 points clear of the top, and you know you can't really mess up from there, surely. Um, but as I said, this will be a game I'll be looking forward to come Sunday half four kickoff, I do believe. The next game we're going to talk about is Watford versus Spurs. Um. Watford have done well under Nigel Pearson. Um, let's not knock what Nigel Pearson has done, you know, for the how many games he's been in charge for, it's like six, seven games now. So let's not knock that. Um, Jason Mourinho, a lot of speculation about um, Christian Eriksen moving on. Um, as you know, I've said in my preliminary predictions that. The last thing I heard and still only heard is the um, Inter Milan have put a fee forward for Tottenham but the gap's too big for both clubs so this will go right to the end of the window um, but I can't see it being moved any more um, quicker than that. Hopefully it does, I mean Christian Eriksen He's a player I do rate. I know you all got your own players that you do rate out there. So, but Christian Evans is one of the players where I look at, I go and watch him, and I'm like, what a player. Um, why can't he be English? Um, but you know, Spurs first Watford, London derby as well. Um, this game's gonna be. I think this game's gonna be a quite good one. Nigel Pierce is obviously going to keep his run going. Jason Radio is, you know, going to want to build on that cut victory that happened during the week. So that game is going to be very much interesting. Um, my, the next game we're going to talk about is Arsenal versus Sheffield United. Chris Wilder, Sheffield United going to Arsenal. Um, now, Mick Arteta has done a brilliant job for the two, three, four weeks, how, how long he's been in charge, but um, I think this is going to be a bit of a, you know, um, a real feel of the Premier League, if you know what I mean. No disrespect to Arsenal played in the past couple of weeks, but 
Sheffield United are the real deal this season. I mean, Chris Wilder has done a brilliant job at Sheffield United. Um, you know, very much manager I would like in charge of my club. Um, but I think he's done a brilliant job. And we've, I've, I'll, be, I'll be one that says it that, um, you know, we didn't knock him off at the end of the start of the season. We had too many championship players in. Um, but no, doing a brilliant job. Also, this weekend, uh, as I said, guys, to see my Premier League positions to see which way I'll call them. Um, my next, the next game we're going to talk about is Man City versus Crystal Palace. Um, Man City title has gone. Um, I do believe uh, 14 points the gap. They did overtake Leicester because of Leicester's defeat in the uh, last weekend. This sort of game for City. I still think they're going to want to win it though because of when you're at higher level as Man City or as Liverpool or you know all these top clubs you have got a sense of pride to play with you and I do believe that Man City are going to want to go out and get the points anyway and let's go over to the Crystal Palace side um, Crystal Palace you know, drawing with Barcelona the previous week had just gone. Um, but it's a different kettle of fish for Crystal Palace, I do believe. It's going to be one of them games where if you're going out there expecting sort of an easy ride, obviously I don't think Crystal Palace will be, but if they are, then you're taking out the completely the wrong way. Um, but this game, I think it's going to be quite a good game. But as I've said, see which way I've called it, probably predictions. The next game I'm going to talk about is um, Norwich versus Bournemouth. This game is vitally important um, down the bottom um, of the Premier League. One in 19th, one in 20th. Um, Bournemouth, you know, losing the previous weekend. Norwich, I'm... I do have, I don't know how to quite say it, but I do feel, you know, I'm a little soft spot for Norwich. I've been up there once um, myself. It was the year my team got promoted and, you know, we had a laugh. And Norwich and us fans just had a laugh. And, you know, Norwich were happy that we were going up. Um, I'll never forget what one Norwich fan said for Sam we're going down this season after straight away didn't happen but the rest of them was up for a laugh and that's all we did so you know as I said I've got a bit of a soft spot for Norwich and um, go over to the Bournemouth end Bournemouth got a lot of problems Callum Wilson ain't scored since September um, but this game I think it's going to be quite a good game and um, I think it's a scrappy game as well to be honest the next game we're going to talk about is Southampton versus Wolves. Um, now, if you're a Southampton fan, please feel free to put your comments down below. How glad are you you didn't sack your manager? Um, Southampton have had a major U-turn over the past few months. Um, you know, let's not knock around the bush or beat around the bush, whatever way you want to call it. Southampton have done a brilliant job sitting 12th in the league, I think. Um, but, you know, fair play to Southampton and they are looking at a right back and a left back. Um, so, they are looking for players out there. Are they going to get them? Put it down in the comments below, Southampton fans. Um, Wolverhampton, you know, doing their own thing. Um, very much of what I was expecting from them this season. Not so much off as in, you know, table standards, but very much off that. I like to see teams if they get in the top six, or I think, I think they finish fifth anyway. Um, top six, top seven, I always like to see them push on. Um, but Wolves are having that battle with Sheffield United, and that game we'll be looking forward to when it comes along. Um, but, you know, fair play to Wolves what they're doing. Uh, still in Europe, I think. Um, but, as I said, see which way I've called these games. Go see my Premier League prediction video. Um, my next game we're going to talk about is West Ham versus Everton. Um, the honeymoon period seems over for David Moyes. 
Um, I think what I think a lot of West Ham's problems are the ground. Um, I've been up there twice myself, and the problem is, and you know this if you've been up there, that you can't get an atmosphere going. The atmosphere it reminds me a bit of the roof thing where you go, sort of gives you an idea of our support. But you try and get an atmosphere and it just goes up through the roof. Um, I think that's what West Ham players struggle with. Um, I think they're going to have to go very careful with some to keep some of their key players. I'm looking at some of their players and I wouldn't mind a plan for my club. But, you know, it's going to be an interesting um, game going forward. Go over to the Everton point of view. Um, doing ever so well under Carlo Ancelotti, great manager. Yeah, again, a very much manager I like in my club. No disrespect to our permanent our manager at the minute anyway, but you know, very much manager we would, we would like to have in charge as well. Um, but Everton doing ever so great things. Sacking Marco Silva, um, I did question it at the start, but Everton board seem to know what they're doing. Um, ex Napoli manager as well, so. Look like you've got a great manager there. Um, you know, I can only see this game going one way, but it's going to be an interesting game, none of the wiser. Um, the next game we're going to talk about is Newcastle versus Chelsea. Um, Newcastle, uh, you know, doing well under Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce did come with a lot of critics on his back. I was one of them critics. Um, I'll hold my hands up to that. But, you know, it's one of them things where, unfortunately, it's one of the managers they go get critics, I do believe, especially being ex Sunderland as well. Um, but they're doing a great job. Um, you know, let's go over to Chelsea and now Frank Lampard. Um, you know, playing the young boys, they got a transfer ban lifted, so this one's going to be interesting for Chelsea. Um, you know, over the next few weeks. Um, but I I like to see the young boys still play, if you know what I mean. I know they obviously want to bring the experienced players in, which is fair enough, but I still like to see the young boys play. So it depends how players they bring in and what positions they cover to see who might come out of the squad. Um, and let's not forget uh, Mason Mount and uh, Tommy Abraham are England internationals as well. Um, the last game I'm going to talk about is Burnley versus Leicester. Burnley have struggled over the past few weeks with the, uh, you know, I think they won the previous weekend, but you know, Burnley have had the struggles over the past few weeks. Um, Sean Dyche doing the best job he can. I think I could work one of their two problems, but it's not my job, so you know. But I think a lot of their troubles probably lay in the defence position and maybe I might need one more attacker. Um, so, you know, it's going to be one of them games, I think. Um, Leicester, on the other hand, um, you know, doing well under Brendan Rodgers, but... Um, You know, losing that game um, to uh, Southampton the previous weekend just probably put their title out their reach. Just one more game to talk about. Sorry, I forgot. Um, Brighton versus Aston Villa. Um, Brighton um, only won one in their last five. Villa have won the previous last three to four occasions in this fixture. Um, but I think with this game, it's so important. But I took it to my account, if you go watch my Premier League predictions, that I did lose the previous weekend to Manchester City on a heavy scoreline of 6 1, and that was at Villa Park. Um, Brighton losing 1 0 to Everton, um, and they did have the odd chance as well. Um, but this game's going to be interesting going forward. Um, but anyway guys this is the end of This Is Football episode 1 if you'd like to see it return give us a big fat thumbs up subscribe for more thanks for watching ciao for now